Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to another conversation uh, with the Dear Busy Singles. And as you know, here we talk about um, self-discovery, um, discovering a soulmate and the Christian way. Okay? And today we're going to be delving directly into a topic that is very personal to many people. And I'll first do the introductions. My name is Princess, and I am your host today. And I have Atikofo here. Uh, she's come before here, and we have her. We had we have the privilege of having her grace our uh, podcast today, and we'll be talking about this um, topic that could be polarizing for some people. Um, but we'll go um, in the in the Christian perspective okay well good Christ is at the center of it all and without wasting any more time we're going to be um talking about identity okay you can call it self-discovery for those who are still struggling with the identity and don't know who they really are where they're going in life uh we're going to jump into this topic um and to go so um often people ask themselves who am I People don't know really. Some people don't really know who they are. They don't know where they're going to. And it's finding one's purpose is actually starting from uh, discovering who we are, who you are as an individual. So what's your take um, about this topic on identity? What's your take? Like, what's where do we start with in finding oneself? Okay, thank you very much, Princess, for inviting me again. You know, I'm very passionate, passionate, especially about the fact that you, a young person, have been so passionate as to start something that is acting. I know you're a very busy woman, you're a mother, you're a wife, you work full time, and you have so many other ideas and you know i ask you questions i know you've been consistent and i pray honestly that god continues to grant you grace and to touch the hearts of people who are listening i feel i must say that having said that um uh, talking about identity what you said i kind of post, you know, or is a bit startled when you say there are people who do not know their identity. For me, I think that everybody believes they're something or the other. The problem is that we, you know, we may have a false idea of who we are, a false understanding of our, ident our identity. And I say it because been there, done that, you know, and I could talk about different identities that people have when they do not know the God who created them. I could start with that, you know, like me, for example, before I was born again. My own, the way I saw myself was Educated, intelligent, free. Um, I can do everything. Yep. And therefore, God, I believed in God. I got to know, I'm sure I've shared this before. It's something I always love to share. From a very early age, I knew I was convinced, and that's just by the grace of God, not you know, so much as what I've been taught, but I discovered him for, as, you know, as real and existing. But it was like, okay, you know, um, it's whatever I make of him, let him keep his distance. Not consciously, mind you, but it's like, yeah, there's somebody there who has all the power, the supreme power, and he's, he's looking, he's actually taking thing, care of things on earth, but he wasn't part of my, how do I say, reality consciousness. He's there in his own place. And of course, what that meant for anybody who sees, who still sees God like that is that, oh, he, he I create him, you know, he's whatever I want him to be when I want him to be. Otherwise, I can dismiss him from my life or anything concerning me. 
And that is why I said that, yeah, you know, even when people say, oh, I don't know what, they do have an idea of themselves. And some, some other type of identity that people might feel is that they're not where they want to be. Yeah. And so they feel, I have no identity. And that's not true. You know, at the point that you actually say, uh, I don't know who I am and why I'm here, you're actually giving yourself an identity. Yes. And as you rightly said, you know, um, as a Christian now, mm -hmm. identity actually, let me not say ah, let me speak for myself because identity is such a personal thing, isn't it? Yes, yes. My identity is so hooked onto my God, my creator, my savior, my redeemer. I can go on and on very easily. I have names for him that I call him every day yeah. um, because he's been so faithful. So when you talk about identity as a Christian, I want to I want us to discuss first, you know, the identity of God. Um what I've known God to be and what excites me most and probably from my own experience, I don't know whether to say most, because, you know, he, ex he tickles me in different ways, doesn't do that well, I mean, from my experience. But when, you know, I thought about this title, the first thing I'd like to say is, Jehovah is the self-existent one who reveals himself. Let's just start there. And when you say self-existent one, it already implies that anybody who wants to create God in the image they have, you know, they prefer or they like or that makes sense to them, they've already gotten it wrong because he's self-existent. And the Bible says he's, I am who I am. And what that means is he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And without, you know, taking much time, I think those two attributes of God already explain where I'm going. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like, you know, we should just go straight on the self-existent one who reveals himself. Yeah. And I find that exciting. And right from Genesis, you see him. He created the creation and he created Adam and Eve. And the Bible says he created a man in his own image. When I say man and woman, it said that in Genesis chapter one, it says clearly that he created. And that was the first time about linking creation, linking any of his creatures to himself. Yeah. Let us create God, uh, let us create man in our own image. Male and female created he him. And that's so exciting in the sense that having created man in his own image, the Bible also tells us that every evening he goes to walk with them, to, you know, communion with them, to fellowship on his own initiative. How awesome. And that's what I keep on discovering in my own Christian life, that not only is he there all the time, omnipotent, omnipresent, omnipresent, and knows everything and can do all things, is that he really seeks us out. He sought me out as an unbeliever, and I know that it's not because I'm special, but that because he's also a righteous God, there's no man or woman, no creation of his, you know, human being that he created in need, that he doesn't seek out in a similar way. It's not unfair, you know, to privilege some over the other so that it's easier for them to know him than others. So everything boils down, you know, I think that's awesome. And every day I rediscover the fact that in revealing himself in his desire to actually have us know him as creatures he has created in his own image. Even in creation, you know, he breathed his life into 
the man, you know, making a living thing. In his great love and commitment to us, he's revealing himself to everybody. So when I think of identity, I start with that. Let's quickly now link it to now knowing who or knowing Christ, knowing God, knowing who I am in him. How, what does that say about my identity? Maybe simplicity to say, well, my identity is that I'm created in the image of I'm a child of God. I could rattle all that. It's all in the Bible, you know, I'm an heir of the kingdom. But it's also amazing that through Jesus Christ, God is my father. You know, I was listening recently to podcasts. You know, I listen to podcasts not only for myself these days when I get excited as I bombarded you. So you better <laughs> you better listen to those things. I get excited and I say, well, yes, I'm retired. I have the time. These people won't have the time. But please, when I said something, I hope they will listen because I know, you know, I want to bless. And I say, I have the time so I can do that job. And... Um, you know that not once, not once, apart from when our Lord Jesus Christ was teaching us how to pray, did he say, our Father. He said, when you pray, say, our Father. But over and over and over again, he says, my Father, my Father in heaven. You see me, you say you don't know my Father. When my Father... You know, and um, I am in him. He's, he would read from John 14 right now, you know. I am my, my, I'm in my father. My father is in him. But the awesome thing is that he keeps on saying that, and in the way that I am my father, my father is in him. You yourself, you're in, in me, and I'm crediting you with that identity, you know, through me. And this was before he actually died and rose again. In the same vein, all the miracles, all his teachings, you know, with the, he would say things like, like the Old Testament, the, the prophets would say, um, the Lord saith, the Lord saith. And, you know, God told me to say this, but never once did our Lord Jesus Christ say that. So where am I leading? He always said, um, you think that I have come to annul, you know, the law. But no, I haven't come to. I have come to fulfill it. My yeah, identity. How do we connect that to us now? I mean, yes. That, you know that the Bible, what Christ has said, that is Christ's identity. Like he, he defined his own identity, identity in the Father. But now how do we um, self, like let's do a self-reflection of that. And so how do we, is there a way that you consider your experiences, your maybe your Christian experiences that have shaped you um, or shaped your identity in Christ? Okay. Um, that's actually where I was leading because Jesus Christ is God. That's what I really wanted to highlight. That from everything, you know, and it's linked to this self-existent one who reveals himself. The mere incarnation of Jesus Christ is God. And this same Jesus Christ is saying, you are my friend. You are my brother. You are my child. You know, everything that, you know, we require on this earth that we need. That's what he is. Now, now being a Christian... I look at our Father, I look at God, I look at Jesus Christ, and I look at what excites me most about it. And if I've been talking about self-existent one who reveals himself, 
is the transparency. I look at myself and I say, he loves to reveal himself because he loves. Because he wants so much to draw men to him, to believe in him, so that they can be with him forever. And, you know, in the same vein, I, as a Christian, I consider transparency fundamental in my, in everything I do, starting with myself, starting with myself. I want to be where, you know, my salvation is concerned, for example. It starts from my really realizing who I am, who I was. I was a sinner. I was a sinner who had created God in my own image. I was a sinner who wanted answers about, okay, um, Jesus Christ, fine, you know, good man, prophet, could be so many things, but Savior, you know, what has that got to do with me? I was questioning things, you know, and let me quickly say, you know, that if we go back to our salvation experience, that's just my own impression, is that we'll know our besetting sin. And once we get saved, that's what we need to watch out for. And every day of my life, even as I grow older and older in the Lord, I'm checking it out. Of course, you know, there is the process of sanctification and things. Um, I'm thinking that sanctification, the fact that the Holy Spirit in you and sanctification isn't merely holiness that God perceives or holiness that others see. It's holiness, if you can term it so, to yourself, which still brings, you know, it back to that issue of transparency with yourself. So to really, you know, get the identity that God wants to you, that's step number one for me. I was saying that, you know, giving my life to God, I gave my life to God the day I realized that, oh, you know, so this is what you've been trying to do. And you say, you know God, and you've been asking these questions and drawing back because you want to do your thing or because you want him to come down to your level. Interestingly enough, the incarnation of Jesus meant that he did come down to my level. And that it was the only reason that I could ever get born again. Because at the time that he knows, which I believe for everybody is the right time, he spoke the language I could understand for me to say, this is your life, Kufu. This is your life. And you're never going to get it right until you understand that I am God. I saved you. And he reminded me of so many things that I even knew, you know, that God, you know, I went through a process. So I knew God did exist, but I did not revere him. I did not respect him. It was, can I say entitlement? Or should I say just a brief, you know, awesome, he heard me, he's there all the time, you know, in several experiences, but I never took time right, to, you know, the euphoria would pass away. Oh, he exists. And it was like, well, I'm entitled he exists. He's taking care of me here and there. And okay, that's fine. You know, God exists. However, to worship him or, you know, was not an issue. This is not good enough. This is not good enough. This is not good enough. Until it became a one-on-one. -on -one. And I believe that God arranges that for everyone every human being that he created. So that is identity at the point of conversion. Yes, now we have a lot of people who, uh, who still wonder, like it's a question that 
at, when people have not really discovered who they are, mm -hmm. like see many young people nowadays, uh, they always have that question deep down, okay, who am I? Who am I really? Okay, I know that I, li I like that you have defined it that Christians, we are children of God. That's what we are in Christ. Our identity is rooted in Christ. Okay, now I just wanted to know that, okay, this identity goes beyond your name, it goes beyond your role, it goes, it's, it's everything about your experiences, you know, your personal experiences and your personal encounters that define your new identity now in Christ. Now, I, I was just going to ask a question now. If we, is there a way for us to say that, or is there a way for us to understand how uh, the concept of our values, our, our values in life, or whatever society values that we see, but, you know, as human beings, we all have values that we hold dear, that shapes our life, our beliefs, our experiences, and the role that that we play in society. So how does our past, okay, how does our past and our present or even our future aspir aspirations uh, shape or define our, our identity? Is there a way for you to explain how you understand that? It's a dynamic, so there's this dynamics of you know, the past, your present life, your experiences, the society where we live in, our values, our beliefs, and there's this dichotomy. And sometimes you just wonder, like, okay, so what do we, where, where am I really standing with all this? So in defining your identity as a human being, so talking to a young person now, how would you say that this contributes in a whole to shape or define our identity? Okay, um, I if I understand you right, you know, and you're speaking from the point of view of your audience, who are mainly young people, and we like to believe young believers. Mm -hmm. And you know, for me, there's really no difference between young. In fact, I think the young people have such a great advantage, and I think I've told you so many times before because they, you know, they've come to know the Lord early. Now, from my understanding, the challenges, the major challenges of a young person, you know, who's concerned about who am I, what's my identity, is probably linked to, okay, um, my, my career, my professional life, my age, which is why, you know, you have this program, um, my plans for the future, I'm saying usually, because in this generation, I think that, although I may be wrong, but I tend to feel the attachment to my genealogy, you know, family I come from, yeah. or my culture, uh, this is the way we do things, but now this is the way the world is going, and mm -hmm. creates a lot of confusion. And that's why I needed to start from where I started. In the first place, um, I'm directing this actually to people who are concerned, um, who are really genuinely concerned. And it's just advice and advice from the Bible and from my experience too. I see, ask yourself, like I said, transparency with yourself is fundamental. Ask yourself why? Are you confused? When you have this great identity, why are you confused? One, Apostle Paul himself came to the realization, and we know that when he gives his background, and he says, I speak foolishly. He, said, he says, I'm a Pharisee of Pharisee, taught by the best, you know, Ivy League and the whatever. But then he ended up said, what I count gain is loss, that they like trash to me, in the knowledge of Christ. Therefore, the Bible says that confusion is not for the child of God. It says we're not supposed to be confused. So if a young person is confused, like I said, first of all, you know, that's why I love that self-existent one, do it to yourself. Why should you be confused? Usually it may be that you haven't reached 
where you want to be. Yeah. And that is why you allow maybe your ambition, your career to cloud who you are. Or it could be your perception of what you or a Christian should be. Because there's this prosperity gospel. Yeah. Everything goes on, name it and claim it. It is your right. Yeah. Um, and then there's also the tendency, and with youth groups, a subtle pressure, spiritual pressure, pressure even within the church. Uh, you can do it. You must whatever. Whereas that that may not be what God wants for you. Yeah. But what God has promised is that give us this day our daily bread. He will give you that as long as the breath that He has breathed in you, you know, when we die, it hasn't changed. You give up your breath in, on the cross. It says that Jesus Christ breathed his last and gave up. The, you know, you can't escape that. But as long as, you know, so that kind of faith is different from faith for what I want. I'm not faith for what God wants for me. We, you know, we're still dwelling on that integrity, be sincere with yourself. So confusion shouldn't be there. Number three, our daily bread is what our Lord promised. He said, that is guaranteed. There's nothing wrong with planning. But then like you rightly brought up, I'm trying to speak to the issues you brought up, your values. If you, are, if you want to keep up with the Joneses, if you make your values the values of your friends, Christian or otherwise, if you make your values and your standard based on the other brother or sister in where he is, and if you are comparing yourself all the time to the achievements of others, you're never going to find your identity. I like to talk a lot about the simplicity in Christ. I'm praying for it every time, all the time. And I'm loving it more and more. Sometimes we complicate our lives by not being simple in Christ. You, in all that we're saying, right? If you know that Jesus loves you, you will love yourself. If you think of the fact that he's making time to draw you near or that he has made time to draw you near and that you are in Christ among, excuse me, the millions and millions of people in the world, at least you know, you're convinced. And that's why I keep on talking about sincerity that ah, I give my life. I've experienced changes in, in my life, but I'm going through a crossroad. Of course, that challenge is always going to be there. And let me quickly say, well, let me quickly say, so that nobody is mistaken. You know, there is no stage. That's what I'm realizing, and I smile and I say, "You are, you are just too much, Lord." There is no stage as a Christian. There's no stage of your life where there's not going to be a challenge. It's a continuous transitional thing that you're going to have to deal with, and God, especially for a Christian, God made it that way for your own good to strengthen you. You can never ever stay in the same position that, okay, I've got this, you know, we've worked this out, it's okay. The challenges are supposed to keep coming. Now you're talking about, sometimes, like I said, I ask myself, you know, there are cowards mm -hmm. and I cannot fully you know, exclude myself from that group. There are just some things that I just rather not. Yeah. But the older I grew, grow in the Lord, the more I understand that, hey, hey, you can't run away from it. This is the phase of your life. You're going to have to deal with it. And But what I'm also discovering every single day of my life is that God always sends a helper. One way or the other, the Holy Spirit or in a person, in a human being, or in an unbeliever. 
I'm saying that, and I can give you an example. I'm saying, you know, so his omnipotence, if you know God for who he is, you know, you know, I've said some things the same yesterday, the omnipotent and present and Messiah. You know that God is with you because you're truly born again. You search yourself. And I say this on a daily basis. That's exactly what I do. And it's my most precious moment I don't joke with, especially now that I'm retired. It's, you know, I just thank God, you know, that there's nothing hurrying me from that important thing of me and him and the company, you know, and I, maybe I shouldn't even call it companionship because that's all day long, all life long. But the, um, just the privilege of being able to come before him and knowing that he's there. You see, so, and that's why I said, it's not going to, um, you know, it's not, you know, th those challenges are always going to come in one way, whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you have children, whether you don't have children, because God has traced Before. your path as his children and you need it to grow to know him more. Yeah. It's like a baby. The day you stop growing in the knowledge and love of God, and when I say love of God, the love it pours in your heart and the love that you have for him and the love that flows through you, the day that stops, that's a stunted child. He's a stunted human being, and that's bad news. And he's made it so easy, so easy for us. And that's why I go back to the fact that the younger people who already truly know him have such a great advantage. And they're the ones we are praying for. Because that advantage, like I said, it's not about money, it's not about, but when you know the truth, is your greatest treasure for any challenges in life, whatever comes. So not only in your present life, even the life around you, if you go through the Bible, there will always be, those, those things will come. We've just gone through COVID. It, they will always come. But the mainstay, the rock that you stand on, the house, the, you know, the kind of foundation of the house that you built, which is you, yeah. is what's going to make you stand. So that would be my response to that. I know I haven't touched on, you know, family, culture, if we have time. Yeah. Well, I get, I get a lot from, and I expect that people are going to be blessed by this. I hope that um, you guys share your comments, whatever it is you are, you are gleaning or retaining from this conversation that we're having. Okay. So when you, as a person, what I say to young people is make sure that you explore yourself. Okay. So your culture, your cultural background, your traditions, your societal norms, all these things, they contribute to shaping who we are. But we shouldn't forget as Christians that our main foundation is found in Christ. Okay. And this connects to personal growth. Like, okay, as a person, we are not static. We're not static. At every stage in our lives, every year, someone who is static is, has stopped growing. And that's practically impossible because life throws you challenges and you get over one challenge, you get over one experience, you get over one setback, and you become stronger than you were. So as human beings, we evolve. And I don't know if I would say our identity evolved, but I would say that because we are rooted in Christ. That's the basis of our foundation. The foundation of our of our of our life should be as Christians rooted in Christ. Okay, but now we evolve over time. Okay, uh, but the only thing I'll tell people is, and that's my advice, is that you need to em embrace your personal growth. It means that you need to be open to change. Some people they get lost in themselves and they don't know who they are because they're not open to change. They're not open to learning. They're not open to, to adapting. They don't want to adopt. Like when you move into a new society, a new environment, a new country, a new continent, um, a new culture, then you're prone to change. You are bound to meet changes. But if you're not ready to learn, you're not ready to adapt, you're not ready to, you know, um, flow, you know, forget, not forgetting your roots, but adapting to what, um, what you see around you. So doing a kind of intertwining of what the new things you're discovering and infusing it, you know, into what you really are. But your foundation is not like a house. Your foundation is not shaken. It's not broken because one of the foundation of a person is 
shaken or compromised, then that house is bound to fall. So once your your foundation, which is Christ, your relationship with Christ, your, your daily uh, devotional time with Christ, your, the time that you spend in the presence of the Lord, once you are grounded in that and you dedicate that on, on I don't know how to say, a, a time that you don't, you don't bargain on bargain. You don't bargain with that time and that uh, moment with the Lord. Once you, that is intact, every other thing, every chapter of your life can come and add new, lay, new layers to to your identity, to shaping who you are, to shaping where you are going, and all of that. But you still not change. So now, if we talk about, um, I don't know if you have something else, but I, I just wanted to talk about like. Um, you have talked about authenticity, being authentic, being real with yourself. Now, sometimes, you know, societal expectations, okay, or even personal challenges can cloud our sense of self. Okay. So how can you can you help someone who is going through some kind of societal expectations or I'll say personal challenges in their lives? And it's kind of making them to wonder, okay, I know I'm a Christian. I know I'm following the Lord. I know my Christian life is sound. I read my Bible. I pray to the Lord. I have my devotional, personal quiet time with the Lord. I go to church. I'm involved in one thing or the other. Uh, so how would you advise a young person, a man, a woman, you know, a young person, who, how to navigate you know, these obstacles in their life while, while they still stay true to to the authentic self, like let's let's kind of discuss that that um the the place of challenges and authenticity, the importance of being authentic. You know, uh, I'll be frank with you. Even that, I think, is a lifelong challenge, and I think. The greatest danger, what I tell myself and remind myself all the time, is that it's the narrow way that the Lord said would get us to heaven. Now, the narrow way means that there are, there's a shift to the right, a shift to the left, and we want to stay in the narrow way. Now, I think the the biggest problem of you know navigating the changes that you talk, and that's what I'm saying is not only for the youth, although it's more relevant to them, because you know seniors like us, we can get away with <laughs> you know whatever you know we can misstep and it's allowed all over the world. Mm -hmm. Now I think it is try you know doing your best to maintain that balance, that narrow way. In other words, there's what we call legalism and it's what we call liberalism. There's a lot of that all over the world in Christendom today. And whichever way you look at it, almost all churches have one culture or the other. Yeah. And um, if I'm talking cult, um, churches, I'm also talking your background, all cultures, you know, tribes, whatever, wherever it is in the world. And when you become a Christian, um, you become part of the narrow way. Yeah. And you have to. That is a challenge. Mm -hmm. But then again, it isn't a challenge when you offer for the simplicity that is in Christ. I'm talking about that so many times. Yes. It is not necessarily something you need to make complicated. You know that even as Christians, we have a different uh, personalities. Yes. We have Mary and Martha. We have Peter. Yes. We have John, who's always silent. Yes. We have, you know, the doubting Thomas. These are apostles. And, you know, it amazes me, you know, because... The Bible says that their names will be written on the foundation of different doors in heaven. These are ordinary men. Well, they're not ordinary, if you know what I mean. But what I'm saying is that the Lord should sort them out as he sought us out, as yes. he seeks us out today. Yes. We are made for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And if I say, yes, as long, you know, 
the Bible makes it clear. Jesus Christ himself said, in the world you will have tribulation, but I have overcome it. And he's able to keep us from falling and to preserve us blameless. Now you've painted an idyllic situation of a young Christian who's actually into that. But I'm saying, you know, I want to make a qualify that by saying, going through the ropes, which can be legalism, right? Mm -hmm. I'm doing it, I'm doing it, therefore, why aren't things happening? Mm -hmm. That's not it, which comes back to the authenticity that you stress, that I call the integrity is absolutely necessary, right? So you, if you tend to have that attitude, you know, it's dangerous. On the other hand, there are some, you know, who come from, I know that there are people who have been hurt when they come from a legalistic spiritual background. I know quite a few of young people in the sense I give them you know, the struggle, 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 they're just not getting there. And then finally they find the truth. But some just leave the church or just leave Christ. Mm -hmm. God will have mercy on us in Jesus' name. Because um, I always tell myself that, Lord, thank God that out of all those churches, there was um, Philadelphia. Then what was, you know, in Revelation, you found some. Yes. And when we look at the calculation out of seven churches, I think two, and then maybe two and a half. Yeah. That's not. And he's always said it, that many there be. So what if I'm going that way, I'm saying that Christ's way is really simple, isn't it? says, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Before I got born again, I knew the Bible. Uh, it wasn't even that part. Uh, it was a part that says, uh, uh, pray, you know, bless your enemies, cause them not. And it was like a smile, a smirk, you know, like, <laughs> okay, I know, I know that's good. It sounds good. But you know, you know I can't do it. You know, and I had no plans of doing it. Mm. But till today, it's a recurring reminder in my mind that you're a Christian, and, when you, and we do get angry. As long as we're on this side of heaven, we're still sinning. I don't know about you, how, what you understand, but when you're authentic with yourself, and as the Bible says, it's not just a sin in what you do or what people can see. It's what goes through your mind. And you find that when you make a practice of being authentic, phew, am I going off point? Let's take, I'm not sure if I'm not going off point. When you talk about culture, you see, everything comes down to that. There are things that are good in our culture that I would never abandon yeah. because they align with the Bible. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about, for example, a young person adapting, um, somebody... Uh, who says, oh, I'm now in this environment and everybody calls themselves by name and whatever, it's okay, it doesn't matter. That's not what the Bible says. He even tells pastors, treat older men as your fathers, treat older women as your mothers, treat the sisters. So he doesn't, he doesn't, you know, the values, be proud of the values that are in your culture that align with the word of God. You know, there's simple things like that, just simple. And you believe that people will love you. Let me tell you, my brother who's been here for over, well, in one of the development for over 50 years, rich man's son who see him, when you're hearing them saying, sir, when you're saying, you know, friends of his son, I look at myself and say, hmm, this is a culture, and I know that he's not in a position to open his eye for those people to say, who are you calling? But they respect the father, you know, they, and they respect, you know, they've learned something about their culture. Look at the Japanese. Yeah. You know, in Asian countries, they have a culture of respect that's so strong. You yourself can feel it as an. So when, say, an African or somebody who comes from a different culture, where you know better, you come and you say, I want to adapt, and therefore I jettison. Then, actually, it means that your, your stand with Christ is questionable. You understand? In the 
in the sense that um, the values that, of course, there's uh, the aspect of immaturity. I mean, even at home, there are children who behave anyhow because they, you don't feed me, you don't whatever, which is, uh, you know, always there for young people. And I think you're thinking of the younger people who should know better. Who, like we keep on saying, there's a difference between not knowing the Lord, but knowing the Lord. But that's just the same, a, a small part of the culture. But there are negative aspects of the culture. Or let's go to family. The word Jesus Christ himself, I do you think that I've come to make peace on the earth? There's no. The point is that I don't know about your experience, but when you give your life to Christ mm -hmm. in a family that is not into Christ, it becomes tougher. Even when the family is not into Christ, and you give and your siblings don't, there's something going to happen. And if you have done that as a young Christian, depending on when you gave your life, if you gave your life, you know, and the family issues come. You have to take a decision. You have to take a, a position for Christ. And because God knew that that's the most delicate relationship that he himself created, because we share the same genes, I am understanding it to mean that when he says, I'm your father, he chose that relationship for a very important reason. When Jesus Christ said, I will no longer you call you um, servants, isn't it? I will, I will call you friends. And in, in another, he said, you are my brothers. You are you know, no longer. You know, that filial relationship, God knows the importance. And he promised, he says, anybody who lives this, meaning that the, the fam family tradition, the cultural tradition, the tribal tradition, the whatever, anybody who says, I am born again now, I separate myself from that. What did he say? He says, I will give you thousands and whatever of mothers, of brothers, of sisters. You will never, it's just like the daily bread. So standing you know, is really the issue. So whether you move from a state in, well, using the example of Nigeria, from Lagos to Ibadan, or Ibadan to Lagos, it, there's not much of a difference in where are you, your identity. That boils down to it. And it's a daily walk, and it's such an easy walk. He says, it's, you know, his garden is light. And each day, I just want to, it really is light. It's just making that time, you know, to get to know him more, to do so consistently, to be faithful in little things. Yes. And he will see you through because your identity will be rooted in him, and you will discover that. For every, you know, blessing he gives you as you grow, and you are not likely to ever want, you know, to do away with that. Of course, the flesh always comes in, you know, in the sense that, you know, it's it's a daily walk. So sometimes the flesh can come, you know, you're, you're angling for this or you're whatever, or you forget yourself. Well, but that constant relationship makes a difference. I When I look at it, I look at... This story, you know, I heard that when they want to teach bank workers how yeah. to recognize, I think maybe in the old times before technology came, what is the genuine bank note? Yeah. They don't bring counterfeit anywhere near them. They make them study the original. Right. They see the original so well, they understand it so well that once a counterfeit comes, it's like, hmm. So it's the same thing with heresies and errors in the church because it's all over us. And I think the Bible has already studied iniquity shall abound. It gets worse. So we need to walk the line, you know, with more care. Yeah. And the Lord will help us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, thank you so much. So uh, it doesn't matter your obstacle, the obstacles you might meet, the changes, the challenges, um, the move, whatever you move to culturally. Um, Status wise, married on or not, your identity is rooted in Christ. So, um, to those people who are on this path, 
and maybe they are still self-discovering themselves and a little bit wondering, okay, so where am I? Where am I going to? What's the plan? I know I'm a Christian and all of that. Um, I just want you to remember that it's, it's okay not to have all the answers. As long as you know Christ, you know Jesus, and every day is a learning curve. You learn to know God more every day. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Right, so you are trying to know God every day, and when you don't have the answers, you look for someone, a pastor, a leader, someone that you trust who knows the Word of God to help bring answers to some of the questions that you have, even questions about yourself. And some people think, okay, if I'm a Christian, then why am I having this? If I'm a Christian, why am I at this point in my life? I'm not moving, and it looks stagnant. If I'm a Christian. Why is it that my life is not as good as those people that I see on social media, on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok, and all of that? I just want you to know that everything that you see on social media is not always the reality. And even if it is, everybody as a person, we have our own path with God. God has traced a path for every individual. We're unique to our path. My path can never be the same. With Even if I had a twin sister, our path can never be the same. God has traced our different paths in in. In his own will, okay, and where he's taking us to at the end of the day, for a child of God, you know that God is your guide. God is the one leading you and guiding you. So my advice to you, embrace your the journey of your life. Every day, embrace it. Okay, Celebrate your uniqueness. You're unique in yourself. You're unique. You're that unique child, son, daughter of God. And be kind to yourself, too. Kind to yourself. You know, when you see obstacles, you see challenges, you see that you're not breaking through the way you expect. You're not having those big wins every day. Just be, as Antikovo said, content. Just be satisfied. Be simple. That simplicity of life. Once that governs your life, that simplicity. And letting yourself um, flow with the direction that God is leading you. So the process of of self-discovery and your identity is going to be a lifelong um, venture or adventure. You continue to travel through every day. You discover yourself more, discover Christ more, discover his will more. And you will learn to, 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 to accept, accept every stage of your journey. And I think that somebody might have somebody, something else to share about this. If you have anything else to share, I think I will advise that you share it. Do you have any testimony, any advice, any comments about this topic? Share it with us in the comments section below. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up, okay? If you have been blessed, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and um, so that you can have um, more of this kind of content and put and hit the thumb, the thumb, um, bell. The, there's a bell there. If you hit that bell, it will be to alert you whenever we bring new contents like this so yeah so your identity is just in summary i'll say it's, it's a masterpiece you are, you, are, you are a masterpiece in progress god is working on you shaping you in his likeness in his in his beauty in his vision to fulfill your purpose the purpose for which uh, you came to this earth so Antikofo, do you have any closing statements yes let me just say um use it's free you know it is also god guiding you when you use what's is what's a pastor referred to as sanctified common sense that's right common sense sanctified common sense he used the example of the apostles in acts one he said yes they prayed they were praying together but they also knew that they were supposed to be 12 one had left yes. and when, you know, they said they saw the need for a 12th person, and it was pure common sense. They used their common sense, say, okay, it's got to be somebody who was right there, right from the beginning. Yeah. And they were able to come up with two. They couldn't make that decision of two on the you know by themselves. And they said they cast lots. That's right. And one came up and they were and they believed, and then they prayed, right? And then cast lots. Mm. They knew God was guiding them, you know. So when I say life is not so complicated about you knowing yourself, mm. focus, use a little bit of common sense as to what you are, 
yeah. and you know stick stick with it the, you know the lord if you're truly of the lord like i said that authenticity that integrity towards yourself is the first love you show yourself so that's about all you know i just like to say thank you so much for giving us this time and until next time people Stay true to yourself and keep exploring. Okay, see you next time and bye. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends and come again for more engaging videos like this. God bless you.